Only Chairman Mao has the key to that law. All we can do is to warn the rest of the world. How much time is there? Less than 72 hours. is suspended several hundred miles below the control unit. We are certain the force of this detonation will rupture the faults of the Earth's surface and set up a chain reaction of explosions when the Earth's tension is broken. There are only 51 hours left. We better notify the President. Gentlemen, it is T minus 120, so we'll have to make this very brief. You all know Colonel Price, flight commander of our Project Astra. <laughs> Colonel, why this trip to Venus? I understand it's over 160 million miles away. It'll take you four months to get there, and you'll be gone for two years. Gentlemen, we've come a long way in space flight in the last ten years. Since 1965, our fixed satellites, our space stations, our lunar landing and base established there several years ago, our probes of the outer solar system, all these efforts have helped prepare us for the payoff of phase one, putting man on Venus. Attention. Countdown is resumed from T minus 120. Repeat. Countdown is resumed from T minus 120. Gentlemen, any more questions? Yes. Why do astronauts take the long way to get to a planet? Instead of hopping straight across to it. Will Dr. Haynes contact Operator 5? Repeat, will Dr. Haynes contact Operator 5? Urgent. Operator, get me ground control. Then base security. And Operator, keep this line open. Actually, we take the shortest route. I'll show you. This is the inner solar system. 
Mars, Earth, Venus, and Mercury. Note, Venus is the next closest planet to the Sun. And your question is, why don't we drop right down here to Venus, taking advantage of the Sun's gravitation? Venus wouldn't be there when we got there. It travels along its own orbit. You make a rendezvous with it? Exactly. Colonel, make this brief. This is our starting point. And Venus at our point of rendezvous. You get into orbit around the Earth as a launching point in space. Then, taking advantage of the Earth's speed along its own orbit, we take off into deep space on a ballistic course that ends here. Now we drop into a Venus orbit and prepare to land. And it's as simple as that? Nothing's that simple. How long will the journey take? Barring unusual circumstances, four months to reach Venus. But counting the return trip and planned explorations, we'll be gone two years. Well, what do you consider unusual circumstances? Anything we're not prepared for. Excessive radiation, meteors, unknown factors. The time is T-minus 117 minutes. All unauthorized personnel are instructed to clear the launch area. Second stage fueling will now begin. Flight crew, stand by. Repeat, flight crew, stand by. That includes me, gentlemen. Oh, one last question, please. Yes. What about your family, your wives, sweethearts? That's the most difficult part of the whole trip. Two years alone? Gentlemen, thank you. That confirmed, Dr. Hayes? Right from the top. That looks like this is it. We'll speed it up. Right. This is ground control operation. Urgent. Unauthorized personnel clear the area. Repeat, unauthorized personnel clear the area. Well, you still think an old war horse like me can't take it? Doesn't matter what I think, Doctor. Your technical knowledge gives you an override on the computer data to the contrary. I hope you make it. Frankly, so do I. Anyhow, it'll be worth it. You know, I've dreamt of this adventure ever since I was a kid. That's telling them, Doc. It's the only way to go. I can think of other ways. Especially for you. What's the matter? A navigator got the countdown jitters? Ten billion dollars worth of taxpayers' money, and we gotta put up with clowns. Oh, come on, you two. Cut it out. I just hope we're something more than guinea pigs for our brain trust out there. Attention, T minus 98. Stage one fueling details, stand by. Repeat, stage one fueling details, stand by. Hey, stage one. That's the coal stuff, the locks. What's happening? They're speeding it up. Well, it must be the weather. We're tied to those tracking cameras. Who cares about pictures? Doctor, get those Pentagon pen pushers off their lard and behind their computers. Our lives depend on ballistics, not pictures. Attention, all base security personnel. Attention, all base security personnel. This is a class one alert. Condition red. Alpha phase is in effect. All civilians not actually engaged in the Astra countdown report to security headquarters for reclassification. Red alert? <laughs> they must be kidding. Khrushchev went out with miniskirts. This is 1975. Even if you kept up with your comic books, you ought to know what China's been fooling around with. Give me control. Attention, all SAC personnel. Report to duty stations immediately. All leaves are canceled. Base now operating under martial law. Accelerate launch. All minor system checkouts are canceled. Reset all timers from T minus 90 to T minus 50. Flight crew prepare to board at T minus 30. Those checkouts can't be bypassed. It's a red alert, Mason. The ICBMs are flying. It's fairly simple. This base is a strategic target. They want us airborne. What do you say, Doc? Relax, Danny. We'll know soon enough. What is it? 
We've got to sit up a matter. Take off T minus 30. Colonel, we can't let the bypass go to checkouts. I've got to check with security. Excuse me, gentlemen. Are we under attack? All I know, gentlemen, is that we're in some kind of military crisis. It may or may not be the big rumble, but you know the routine. All bases scramble, and that includes our big bird out there. Colonel, what about those secondary checks? You and Dr. Mary get together see if you can live with your pet fixes as they are. It's go for anything short of a fuel leak. What's the use of launching if we're going to blow it? You know as well as I do, without a full checkout, anything can happen. And we're going to be out there two years. Anything can happen while we're standing here. situation. Red alert. That is all we can say now. Russia has advised us that... T minus 45 minutes. General, there's no time for that. You are to replace three of your crew with three other officers. Women? Now I've heard everything. Colonel, this is ridiculous. It's absolutely insane. Gentlemen, I don't understand. You will, Colonel, but there's no time to argue. And what's this? It's special sealed cargo. It's to go on board. I can't take extra weight, you know that. The weights have been calculated, Colonel. We three women weigh less than the men we're replacing. Oh, and uh, just who do you have in mind replacing? They're in your orders, Colonel. Dr. Brown, flight surgeon. Well, it's me. Lieutenant Sharp, instrument tech and assistant navigator. And Major Williams, co-pilot and systems engineer. Yes, sir. T minus 44 minutes. Pardon me, sir. You or the Joint Chiefs or the president can order what you wish. Personally, I think you're out of your minds. Colonel Price, it's not in your province to judge. Isn't it? No. What about the emotional stability of a mixed crew in deep space for over two years? Colonel, we're quite stable. We have no special accommodations on that ship. There's no privacy at all. Nor are we asking for any special privileges, sir. Colonel, this is Dr. Marion Turner, flight surgeon, Microbiologist. Where do we put on our suits, sir? There goes my stability. What's the story, General? What's going on, General? Let us in on it. Let us in, take some shots. Let us in. Lieutenant Carlson, computer instrument tech and meteorologist. Hi. Major Bronsky, co pilot, and survival specialist. Bronsky, the Russian? First woman on the moon. That is right. Fortunately, I was at the International Space Conference in Washington when this emergency arose. I'm happy to say that my government has authorized me to join you. Emergency? You haven't said anything yet, Doc. What can you say, Colonel? It's a presidential order. There must be worse fates, Colonel. Gentlemen, I'd like to consult our project director, Dr. Haynes. I'm sure he... You don't have time, Colonel. Please get these women ready at once. T minus 43 minutes. Attention, Astra flight crew. Stand by for van pickup at T minus 30. Sorry, man. Three years of preparation. Well, at least my wife will appreciate these replacements. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Ladies. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You know, there must be a practical side to having women. You mean like having your socks washed? Everything okay? A-okay. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ground control to Astra. Everything is A-OK -okay from here. All systems are go and you have a good climbing angle. Your velocity is 3250 at T plus two minutes. Confirm time sync and prepare for booster cutoff. 
Astra to GC. A OK. I'll go here. Time sink. T plus two minutes, 15 seconds. Cut off. T plus three. Read you loud and clear. Confirm BECO at T plus three. We don't like Dr. Perry's pulse here. He'll have it made. He can only take the second stage into Earth orbit. Astra to GC. Read you. 30 seconds to cut off. Colonel Price, this is Dr. Turner. Clear the air, Dr. Turner. How much time do we have before second stage cut in? Clear the air. Doctor, you will have several minutes at low G before the second booster takes us into Earth's orbit. The ship's gravity control is on. Ground to Astra. Dr. Turner has a point. Before second stage cut in, we are T plus two and 45 seconds. Sequence your checkouts. You've got two minutes before cut in. Give me a half G on the gravity neutralizer. You got it. Colonel, what about Dr. Perry? You'll have to chance. Dr. Perry must have pure oxygen. Now ask Aeromedical for his reading. Control the asteroid. Your flight attitude is there. Roll sequence is programming in, changing azimuth to 75 degrees northeast. Do you read? Astro to GC, Roger. Take sequence 2-1 as follows. Cabin temperature 90, air pressure 5.5, relative humidity 36 degrees. Sequence 2-5 next. Danny, read off. Uh, telemetry and tracking of green here. A little hash from shielding. Colonel, I warned you not to bypass those subsystem checks. Take it, Kurt. Auto guidance is sluggish. Manual override seems okay. Pitch axis is following computer control. Two degrees per second, over. Ground control to Astra. Dr. Turner, the Aeromed readings on Dr. Perry. Dr. Turner, you must let me run this ship. Astra to ground. Come in. You have one minute before firing second stage. Where is your fire commit data? Where is your fire commit data? That's Perry's sequence. Major Brodsky, get into your seat. We fire in less than a minute. Major Brodsky! Capcom to Astra. Your heat exchanges and pressurization. Give status on sequencer units before program commit. Astra to Capcom. We are T plus four minutes and 10 seconds. What is your attitude for orbital entry? Are we hitting the slot? Capcom to Astra. We can't bring up your nose. Hit your overrides and fly by wire. You need four degrees vertical pitch. Throw the automatic tanks on manual. Bring us up. I'm on wire. That's it. 15 seconds to second stage cut in. Major Bronsky, Danny, 15 seconds.
check the sequencers on the gas generators. Committed. Everybody grab tight. Capcom 2 Astra, all lights green. Four, three, two, one, zero. Established, prepare for Venus launch at T plus 1100. Venus launch, T plus 1100. T plus 11. They're moving us ahead again. Combustion sequence in, purge valves green, gas generators full pressure. You're A-OK. -okay. You know, Dr. Perry might have lost his life if you hadn't, uh... We're thinking of one life. The Colonel was thinking of all of us. Escape velocity reducing to ballistic course speed. Dropping to 18,000 miles per hour. Cabin pressure up to 0.9 atmospheres. Set control to AGCS. And secure final flight mode. And here we are. The old girl didn't pop a rivet. Venus, open your arms. They sure pushed us out of Earth orbit fast. I got a feeling there's something more than a war involved. You'll have plenty of time to ask them. Everybody get unplugged. Does she know why we're here? No. Are you going to tell her? I hope she never has to find out. It's been throwing out a good spectrum. Mm. The shift is declining. Velocity 17,500. I'd say we're 40,000 miles out. We'll put it in the ship's computer and see what we get, Doc. Right. Well, let's get these wires off, huh? Yeah. What's her name? Uh, Turner. She's a doctor, isn't she? Mm hmm. Can't wait to take inventory, huh, Kurt? I happen to think she knows more about this cruise shift than she's letting on. Danny, get me Astra Control. I want to talk to Dr. Haynes. Right. Hey, they've got us. I think about Russia and the U.S. The Chinese are at it again. That's news? Picking up a bomb of static must be the Van Allen belts. Or China with her nuclear toys. What does that mean, Doc? Well, it's possible that new device they came up with. Well, that's why the pig rumble. Well, that's my guess. Their principle could start an uncontrolled chain reaction. That is, if they're mad enough to try it. Doc, you better get your checkup. Oh, I'm much better, thanks. Much better. You know, for a while there, I thought I'd never make it. If it weren't for you, I'd probably... Not me. Thank Major Bronsky and Danny. I don't know they're making them like that anymore. Come on, Chris. They have to bury these probes so deeply. It's less than a bee sting. <gasps> you could not, Colonel Wright. Right. 
thought the proprieties were out. What's in? At least let us get familiar with the routine. True, Doctor. We do have a long time ahead of us. And with only three personnel modules on this ship, we should get quite familiar with the routine. What is this? Sophisticated American suffering from false modesty. In Russia, we are more mature. Shall we proceed, Doctor? When you're through in here, Doctor. Coming, Kurt? Oh. Nice, huh? Katie. This isn't a hayride. We're here for a serious purpose. What could be more serious than a hayride? I don't think she realizes how serious this is. What are you two talking about? There you go, Major. I can't get over it. Putting females together with a male animal in a cage like this. What are we supposed to do for the next two years? Breed? Uh, how about some checkouts while uh, communication's clear? You know something? Kurt could have a point here. What do you mean? Well, those Pentagon computers are pretty sharp. Sending us three women? Well, supposing China did destroy the world. There'd be nothing left for us to come back to. Oh, come on, Doc, you're space happy. You've been reading the pulps again. Doomsday. <laughs> Get him. Well, I mean, you guys aren't taking him seriously, are you? Those chopstick jockeys couldn't come off of the planet buster, could they? Look, it doesn't have to be the Chinese. Accidents could happen on any side. For the love of... Increase the gravity. Right. Ham sandwich? The mustard. This is the first time I've seen the Earth and the Moon together from space. Of course, the Russian probes have photographed most of the solar system. <laughs> of course. I speak the simple truth, Comrade Mason. So do I. And don't call me Comrade. First into space, first to set the record for manned orbital flight, first to... The question isn't what you did, but how. What do you mean? I saw one of your unannounced tries in Earth orbit. A ruptured hulk with a corpse for a passenger. How many more are there? Perhaps, Captain Mason. We are more dedicated to science. To science? Ha. Hey, Kurt, lay off, will you? I can not take care of myself, Lieutenant. I'm sure you can, Major. But if you ever need the reserves, just whistle. I'll be on the lower deck if I'm needed. He's not really a fink. He just acts like one. A what? Never mind. Shower? Mm. Love your homemade water. We do travel first class. Where's that music coming from? Our later day Marconi seems to have broken through the static. Who? Oh, Danny. I think he's cute. If you like boys. See, I've been wondering, uh, you got a specialty? Uh-huh. Oh? Meteorology. 
Would you care to join me on a tour of the ship? See what makes it tick? I know what makes it tick. You do? Uh-huh. You're divorced? Colonel Price is separated from his wife at present. And Danny? Sweet. A merit badge for him. You do get around. You, uh, forgot Grandpa. Dr. Perry's age should protect me there. I wouldn't bank on it. Huh. Let's cut out the games, huh? You know what's ahead of us. We're all gonna be cozy together for a nice long time. Now why don't you relax and enjoy it? Very forceful, aren't you? Do I uh, need force? I was talking about vibration. Oh. How are yours doing? What do they say? I'm not sure, but I uh, like them. They may like you. In time. startled me. I'm uh, finding a high DNA distortion rate due to uh, hard radiation. Probably the Van Allen belt or uh, solar flares. Speaking of flares, I uh, wonder what happened to the fireworks back home. Well, I just thank God that any destruction was averted. I could have told them they were crazy. This whole mess was unnecessary. I mean, bringing your women along. Some stargazer panicked and thought the world was going to end, didn't he? It was a joint recommendation of the National Security Committee and the Scientific Advisory Board. The president had to act before the Astra was launched. So in case the world did end, they figured a few people like you and me could do a rerun on Adam and Eve? Yes, something like that. Look, Colonel, we're only doing what we were ordered to do, and if it doesn't suit you, well, I'm very sorry. You know, without your glasses, you're a very pretty doctor. Oh, I'm sorry. I came to see about supper. Oh, well, it's the altitude. It works up the appetite. <clears throat> I'll help you, Katie. But, Doctor, Captain Mason has not, uh, got to me, as you say. Ah, there we are, folks, fresh off the space farm. I must confess, your country is certainly first in the culinary art of space cooking. Ah, that smells delicious, Danny. Thank you. By the way, Major, remember those Russian ghost ships that Kurt mentioned? 
I'd like to ask you... I know of no ghost ships. Well, there was an early Venus Pro. The, um, it's Vestia II, I believe. Yes, the Vestia II. That was lost in space. Well, its maneuvers were much too sophisticated for it to be unmanned. The Vestia II was a robot ship. There were no men aboard. I see. Then it was purely coincidental that a certain Igor Nikanov just happened to disappear just about that same time. Colonel Nikanov did not die in space. They would have told us. I knew him very well. He was my instructor in astronautical science and... Yes. And he was also a very important party man. We do not mix politics with science. We interrupt. It takes a few seconds for transmission to return. What do you see, Kurt? Nothing unusual. Still there. What is it? My God. They did it. It's happened. Clear war. Everybody, what's, what's all the big surprise about? Two years from now, when we get back. When we get back. If we get back. Give me the filters. Bring it in close. That's not all, Don. Earth fragments. Great broken masses of land hurtling toward us at meteoric speed. Earth fragments, that's right. Meteors. We'll have to change course if they get any closer. You and Kirk get the radiation shielding up. Right. Oh, I hope. 
hope so. I... I want to live. I want to live! Come on, Kurt. Get a hold of yourself. We all want to live. Danny. Danny, do you hear me? He's just been sitting there like that. my little brother years ago when he fell from the roof of the barn. He's going to be all right. Danny? Danny? Danny! What happened? He's all right. I'll be asked if you need me. <laughs> Some astronaut. There's nothing to be ashamed of, Lieutenant. We are all very shaken up. Well, you seem very calm. My years of training. Say, what made you become an astronaut? You ask because I'm a woman? Yeah. In my country, women follow the same professions as men. I excelled in science in the university. It was only natural that I should become a part of the space program. Were you interested in it? It never occurred to me to question. I followed the advice of my superiors. I was proud to be the only woman in a class with six men. Oh? Well, uh, don't you miss being a woman? I mean... I know what you mean. You know something, Danny? I like you. You do? Yes, Danny, I do. cuts the radiation to about 5%. Flight crew, secure. Get into your seats. Meteors. Repeat, secure. Meteors. Meteors. Come on, Mason. There's no time. Hold the cabin pressure at 0.9 atmospheres. Let's do it! What if we catch a hole in the hull? We've got emergency patches. Without suits, we'd never get a chance to use them. Here we go. Damned alarm is driving me nuts! It's 15 degrees elevation fast. We're, we're not plotted. We'll get lost. 15 degrees. 15 degrees! Doc, how much reserve fuel can I use? They've got the whole return booster. I'm not going home, so shoot the work, Skipper. Why don't you shut up? Mason. We're clear. Drop us back 15. Cut the engines. Cut the engines. Save the fuel. I will. When you level out. Oh. But until this media traffic bends, we've got no other choice. How much fuel have we used, Skipper? We've used 20% of the third stage tanks. And it'll take that much again to get us back on course. Mason, relax. It's the only fuel we would have used on the return trip. Doc, we need a new course. What we need is time to collect what brains we have left. What are we going to do? What's going to happen to us? How do you feel? Lousy. 
All right. Let's run a playback on this whole thing from the beginning. So, fortunately for us, they saw the end coming and reshuffled our crew. In other words, we've been paired off on a latter-day Noah's Ark. Nothing like facing the facts, is there? I've got myself railroaded into a stud poker game. Hey! Not bad, eh, kids? Who'd have thought of it? Katie Carlson, the girl who thought she had everything going for her. Now the future mother of a nation. Hey! May, um, an older man offer something. The past is gone. Every second brings us closer to a new, untouched world. Our world. We're the lucky ones. At least, we have a tomorrow. Got us back on course again. All we have to do is slide down your orbit, four months of free fall, and we're home. Don, can I talk to you alone? Well, sure, Don. Kurt? Uh-uh. Rank has no privileges anymore. And no secrets. It's all right, Doc. Go ahead. All right. We can't afford four months. We've got to get there in less than two. Two? Impossible. We'd drain the fuel. We wouldn't have enough to make the Venus entry. The Earth's explosion has tripled the radiation out there, and it's non-directional. We just can't shield it out. Oh, it's mostly soft stuff, alphas and betas. The gamma concentration isn't critical. Yes, I know, but four months' exposure to it'll mean just one thing. Sterilization. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell do you find amusing? Procreation. The only thing our damn machines can't do. And we're gonna lose it. <laughs> well, I'm lost, Doc. We can't land without fuel. A few could. By stripping the ship, dropping the booster shell. Oh, I know it sounds ridiculous to say that the weight of a few people could affect the safety of a 50-ton ship, but I've checked and rechecked it on the computer, and, and there's no other answer. How few? Yes, Georgiana. I just came in to open the ISPM switches. Danny and Katie are doing maintenance on the digital units. Yes, I asked him to check the Stellar B registers. We can't get a good fix on Sirius. I see. How long was she standing there? I don't know. Anything else you wanted? Uh-huh. Don't. Don't your vibrations ever stop? 
You know it has to be sooner or later. Why don't we make it sooner? Mason, what are you trying to do? See if I couldn't guess. Take your hands off her. It's too damn crowded in this sardine can to be playing tag. I said take your hands off her. Bring it up! Mason, I've had it with you! You straighten up or spend the next two months locked below. Come on forward. Dr. Perry has something to say to all of us. Well, you see, the omnipresence of all this radiation leaves us no option. And we have to protect the three people who will survive. Three? Yes, three. Well, four of us will have to... That's right. Fuel and weight factors leave us no other choice. It's beyond despairing. Why should you despair? In a fire, the mayors are always saved, aren't they? Nothing ever changes in space or people. Okay, who decides what? We have everyone's Excel file. The computer will be programmed. Ha! Huh. Sex in the machine. Well, who does the programming? <laughs> Dr. Perry, Any objections? How close are we? Less than a million miles. Only a few days now and we'll be entering into orbit around her. Only three of us. Only three. I hope you're one of them. I hope you are. I started this trip, I had a whole world to choose from. Now... Now there's just me, huh? Just you and me. the answer. Right? You're out of order, Captain. Pretty fancy programming, Doc. That information is for Colonel Price. Why? We're all in the same mess. You're gonna love this. I know, Katie. You must be bitterly disappointed. No, not at all. It's almost biblical. A patriarch, Adam. Fatherly, kindly. I think it's a fine choice. It's amazing. The wisdom of an unemotional machine. That man represents a million years of knowledge for tomorrow's generation. You really buy it, huh? Well, I don't care what that damn computer says. There's only going to be one decision, and I've made it. You and me, baby. You and me. I've waited long enough for you. 
You're fine. No one else is going to get their hands on you. personal decision, we must see the logic of it. Georgiana, I just don't know what to say. I'm happy for you and Katie. Besides, I'm the oldest. And that's it? Huh? The computer was programmed. It doesn't make errors. It's man-made, so it can make errors. We've become machine worshippers. Don't you see it? We're so used to flying on instruments, we don't know solid ground when we're standing on it. What are you trying to say? He's trying to say that you and Marion are very much in love. You're young and vital. Essential ingredients for an infant's humanity. You're an animal! That's right, baby, an animal. We're all animals. No rules. No more pretense. Survive! The game. please. Captain Mason, Katie, do you hear me? your supply of food concentrates. They thought of everything, didn't they? Well, there's enough for this load anyway. Okay. Those are earth fragments. Entry should begin at once. Doc, we didn't reject the computer's decision. Why should you? Well, I consider it settled. You and Marion and Major Bronski will carry on. Right, Danny? Right. Suppose I had stayed at home. Is this way I get a chance to wave goodbye? I've got to get my gear. It'll be all right. Because it has to be. Danny, hold it. Nobody leaves the ship. It's all of us or nobody. What? You heard me. But that suicide, the extra weight. We're going to chance it. But, Colonel. Hit the booster commit. That's an order. Right. I'm admitted. Okay. In less than ten minutes, the last stage will blast free and we'll begin deceleration. Everybody secure. Look, the board. We never got my subsystem checkout. The circuit's been shorted. There's a misalignment in the booster connect. Let me get it, Skipper. He'll be all right, won't he? With the booster blast free, he could use it as a raft. We're committed. We can't stop the sequence. You mean he can't get back to the ship? We'd be gone. 
fasten your straps. enough mass to swing it. It's really jammed. Keep trying, Dan. Keep trying. Central Park on a warm summer's night. Have you ever been to Central Park? No, Danny, I've never been in Central Park. It was a beautiful place. It started at 59th Street. Hey, look! They're just meteoroids. No, no, over there! We've got 
got some excess baggage. What is it? Looks like a countryman of yours. Got some oxygen. And emergency power from the batteries, what's left of them. There's no main power. And that means. Somebody's betting on us. We've got to win. Those systems ought to come on now like crazy. But first, let's see if we've got a home to go to. I think I can milk 108 megs out of this rig, even in Russian. Hello, Astra. This is the Asbestia 2 call. Astra. You read me, Astra? Over. I don't believe it. Danny, where are you? This is Astra calling. Is Bestia too? Don't give up, Danny. Keep trying. Is Bestia two to Astra? Come in, please. Over. Are you there? 
Come in, Astra. Answer me. Anybody, please. Is Vestia 2 calling Astra? Come in, please. Come in, Danny. Come in, you wonderful crazy. Do you hear me? Over. Our craft is operable. We need guidance for entry. We read your signal, Astra. It's faint, but we can beam in on it. Keep it coming. We're on our way. I'm switching to manual control. Activate the view screen. I want to see where I'm going if I'm taking this baby in by hand. I'm activating the image stabilizer systems. We're set on wide scan. Should be able to get reception from Venus shortly. Hello, Astra. All our systems are go. I'm reading your signal, but I'm not getting any audio transmission. Astra, I know you can read us. In two seconds, we're going to boost our reception. Stand by to confirm you're holding us on beam for our entry. Astra, Astra, what's happened? Where are you? We're picking up no signals from you. No, it's okay. We've got their signal. Or do we? to communicate with no longer exists. Your sister craft no longer exists. The signal you are following is a warning. Had you been able to decipher its meaning, you would not have attempted to trespass on our world. Your world? Who are you? We are the collective minds of this world your craft now orbits. Be it enough for you to know that during the span of our evolution, our civilization has witnessed the birth and death of worlds and suns untold. But enough. Your time is short. You may not enter our world. We have witnessed the self-destructive powers of the green planet you call Earth. We have no malice toward you. You have destroyed your place in the universe. Listen, of this we will tell you. Your journey will continue. 
something very strange and very great awaits you beyond the rim of the universe. And now, last of man, your journey will begin.